Bulby's Attachment Theories. Key Ideas. Hi, Rory here, and welcome to Bulby's Attachment Theories Key Ideas. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. In this video, you will learn about the founder of the theory, the historic background of the theory, Bulby's phases of attachment, criticisms of the theory, the takeaways from the theory, and Bulby's legacy. And don't forget to get your free handout. Click the link in the comments bar below to get your free handout on Bulby's theories. So the founder of Bulby's theories, unsurprisingly, is British psychologist, psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Edward John Mostyn Bowlby, to give him his full name. He was born in 1907 and he died in 1990. And he is considered the father of attachment theory. Bowlby grew up in an upper middle class family in London. His father was a surgeon and was often absent. He was cared for by his nannies, but did not spend any time or much time with his mother, which would be a social norm for children in his socioeconomic class at that time in history. He was sent to boarding school in 1914, age seven, and in 1921, he entered the Britannia Royal Naval College in Dartmouth, where he trained to be a naval officer. From 1925 to 1928, he attended Trinity College, Cambridge. He went on to study child psychiatry in 1937, and he became a psychiatrist at the London Child Guidance Clinic. Bowlby joined the Tavistock Clinic in 1946, becoming the clinical director, and he retired in 1972. In 1951, he prepared a report on behalf of the World Health Organization to contribute to the United Nations Programme for the Welfare of Homeless Children. His report, Maternal Care and Mental Health, is considered by many to be a landmark study in child attachment. And just to bring Bowlby's theory or, or this particular piece of work into um, a context in the here and now, he was reporting on children that had been um, orphaned in war, from, mainly from the Second World War. And it's worth considering that we're seeing that same situation today. Lots of children orphaned by wars around the world, sadly. And don't forget, if you want a free handout on Bulby's work, click the link below in the comments bar. Click on it to get your free PDF handout. So let's have a look at Bulby's phases of attachment. So from zero to three months, or basically from the time a baby is born, babies prefer human faces. Bulby suggested that smiling increases the caregiver's love and attention, promoting both attachment and bonding. From three to six months, babies can differentiate between people and they begin to attach to people they prefer, usually if favouring one person in particular. Bowlby assumed this person was the mother. However, it could be with anyone the child had positive interactions with. From six months to three years, babies prefer a specific individual. When they can crawl, they will follow that person around, and if the selected person leaves the room, the child will exhibit separation anxiety. Babies will fear strangers at about seven to eight months and especially in unfamiliar circumstances or situations. By the time babies are a year old, they have a working model of a favoured individual. And then three years to the end of childhood. Well, Bowlby said very little about the fourth stage of attachment. He observed that children could comprehend that the primary caregiver may have plans of their own at around three years of age. And as a result, the child is less distressed if the caregiver leaves for some time. So those are Bowlby's phases or phases of attachment or theories. Now, Bowlby has come up for quite a bit of criticism and some of the criticism is really valid. So let's have a look at three specific criticisms. Well, the first one was by Professor Michael Rutter, who did a lot of work with Romanian refugees in the 1980s. And he argued that if a child fails to make an attachment, this is privation. Deprivation refers to the loss of or damage to an attachment. The complete lack of attachment bond 
rather than its loss. So he made a very, very, uh, he differentiated quite clearly between privation and deprivation. And that leads really to the other criticism of Bowlby's work, that childhood experience may have influenced Bowlby's theories, leading to something called confirmation biases. He saw his mother infrequently, a governess brought him up until the age of four, and then left the family's employment. And as stated earlier, he went on then to go to boarding school and saw very little of his mother. So he was deprived of attachment, did see his mother, but he, he didn't see her very often. So that's deprivation. And as Michael Rutter said, privation is where there's absolutely no attachment bond at all. And then in the 60s, researchers Schaefer and Emerson, um, in 1964 to be precise, noted that specific attachments started at about eight months old and by 18 months only around 30 percent of children were attached to only one person with some having numerous attachments and if we think of you know children that we know it may be our own children our grandchildren our brothers and sisters we know that actually children do form multiple attachments so what are the key takeaways from bulby's research well Bowlby's theory was evolutionary. It suggested that children come into the world biologically pre-programmed to form attachments as a survival strategy. Bowlby identified a timescale for developing an attachment around about two and a half years. And if attachment did not take place during that time, it might happen at all. Bowlby later revised that idea, saying the attachment period may be five years. He believed that a child had an innate need for one attachment figure, a concept he called monotropy, which suggests one relationship is more important than others. He also thought that attachment is a cognitive framework for understanding self and others based on the primary caregiver's relationship. The framework becomes a prototype for other relationships. So what's Bowlby's legacy? Well, certainly other researchers followed in Bowlby's footsteps, defining and developing his theory of attachment. In the 1970s, Bowlby's research assistant, Mary Ainsworth, conducted the Strange Situations research, which pointed to three attachment patterns, secure, avoidant and resistance. And then in 1990s, researchers Main and Solomon identified a fourth attachment style, disorganised attachment. So that's the end of this short presentation. Don't forget to click in the comments bar below to pick up your free Bowlby's Theories handout. And as always, thank you for watching.